Welcome to the Nevada desert. Over the past week, I've been exploring this landscape with my good friend Keith. While I'm usually on the trail with my wife and two daughters, I've taken the opportunity for an extended guys trip while the rest of the family visits with relatives. This morning, we were fortunate enough to witness a very rare event, desert rain that not only quenches the parched, thirsty ground, but also waters these palm trees through an intricately woven collection system of sandstone watersheds, gutters, and crevices, directing its life-giving flow straight to the roots. The desert has always been intriguing to me, and this day will forever be etched in my mind as I watch creation at work, perpetuating life in what is usually a dry, unforgiving environment. My sustenance of frosted mini weeds and dark roast coffee paled in comparison to this natural process taking place in front of me. things out there good you sleep good oh yeah i slept great you yeah. oh man it was another one of those nights just that pitter yeah. patter of the rain nice. there's a huge well there still is a huge rainbow right over there yeah i can see it out the window pretty cool yeah but yeah it was like this pocket and we just keep getting the sun and yeah. the rain <laughs> just Crazy. not stopping All right, well, good morning, folks. We've had our coffee, we've had our cereal, and now we're just casually meandering around this, you know, average <laughs> campsite. I think we landed on Mars. Actually, this is probably better than Mars. This is insane. Just look at that. How much weight. It's like nature's game of Jenga over here with the balancing axe. Crazy. Water on it, you know? Yeah, it really adds a contrast, doesn't it? Uh huh. It just brings out the colors in the rocks, like the swirls. And yeah. Everything, you know? After a peaceful morning wandering around the Martian landscape, the light rain slowed to a stop and the sun began peeking out of the clouds. So we packed up camp to hit the trail again. Nevada had yet again surprised us this morning with its vibrant colors and mesmerizing formations, so we were a little more than anxious to see what else it had up its sleeve. All right. Well, that was an otherworldly spot. While we were able to get off the trails for the worst of the rain, rain moved through, now we're back at it again. It's just not of this world.
As we climbed in elevation, the red sandstone gave way to glittering granite with Joshua trees and Choya cactus dotting the landscape. Up ahead, the map showed some historic mines, so we began making our way to the remnants of a short-lived gold rush town. All right, well, time for a little bit of lunch. We are standing on what was an old town site. Gold was found up in those hills, and as always, there was a gold rush, tent city, with a few permanent buildings that are just now gone completely. About a five year gold rush, and then poof, everybody's gone. And what's left is just small little hints of what was. But what a cool spot. After a quick lunch, we began meandering through the house sized granite boulders and stumbled upon a stone that had us scratching our heads. Wow. We later learned that this is called an arestra which actually predated the gold mining activity here by about 200 years when the Spaniards also gave mining a try in this area back in the 1700s. This center pivot would have an axle built with a long arm connected to a heavy rock that could be pulled in circles by a burrow. Chunks of ore were laid in the groove and crushed as the heavy rock rolled or tumbled over the top of it. It was quite the ingenious precursor to the more modern stamp mills that can be found all across the western states. Next, we took a few spur trails out from the town center and found even more mines in the nearby hills, which have been blocked off now with welded grates. This site was apparently in operation in the 1980s to support a nearby gold and silver mine. Historical information is a bit sparse, but it doesn't seem to have been profitable in the long run. Here's a handy tip if you're a mining history buff, prospector, or just a curious rock hound. You can use the Mines and Minerals resource layer in Gaia GPS to see the approximate location of mines along with some very basic data on its primary resource. This area was dotted with gold, silver, uranium, fluorite, mica, copper, vermiculite, radio crystals, and even more strange minerals I won't attempt to pronounce here. It looks like it was quite the geologic cornucopia back in its heyday. Just remember to check the rules on prospecting and rock collection whenever you're exploring the wilderness since laws can vary depending on the type of public land you're exploring. Maybe they, yeah, they planted it out here with the mine. Wow, crazy. I wonder if somebody sat here and ate one in the map. <laughs> <And then it laughs> grew. Wow, pomegranates in the wild, who would have thought? This place is just unreal and tight. It's not been used much, so uh, the trails have really kind of gotten a little snug. We're threading our way through. 
on the hunt for camp. After poking around several other historic mining sites, it was time to hunt camp, but these trails were very seldom used, and the junipers were beginning to swallow it up. But after a few quick stops for some pruning, we found a sheltered camp just in time for sunset. All right, folks, I believe this is home sweet home for tonight. Finally tucked into some trees this go around. Not so much of an epic camp as a sheltered camp, but we will take it because we've got some amazing views poking up behind us here. Got these clouds just going nuts on the mountain. Love it. This is spectacular. So I'm packing up my bags and heading westward. Looking for a place to call my own. And I know I could find peace down in the Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's good bacon, too. Good job. The trail we had chosen this morning was supposed to lead us back to a primary artery in the area, but about two thirds of the way in, it was as if this trail had been forgotten. The area was burned by a wildfire back in 2005, and this section of trail looked as if it hadn't been driven much since then. And so the whip saws and occasional chainsaw was called into action to clear some of the more aggressive limbs, while leaving the rest to leave their signatures alongside our body panels.
Do you have any aversion at all to pinstripe? Man, the trail has just uh, kind of gone to nowhere all of a sudden. This is not the trail for you. Yeah, that's not good. No, I got a little uh, tree here to work on. Thankfully, we only had a couple more miles to go, and aside from this boulder and stubborn pin oak in the way, we made it through without much drama. Though the pristine trailer graphics are now thoroughly battle tested. trying the tundra out. Once back to the primary trail, it was my chance to try Keith's tundra, seeing as how we're in the market for our next rig to be a full size option. You'll have to subscribe and stay tuned for my thoughts on this second generation tundra, as well as another test drive coming to the channel where I head north to Alaska and spend some time in the new third gen tundra along the Dalton Highway. As we made our next big jump to another region, we spotted every long distance overlander's oasis, a public dumpster, where we quickly disposed of our trash, along with the trash we cleaned up from others, which can add up quickly. Now it was time to dive back onto the trail for the final leg of our adventure. Very nice. It'll work. I think this will work. So there are a couple of flat spots. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, we've arrived at yet another spectacular camp. It's almost like we planned this, but I assure you, this has all been happenstance thus far. What a spot. And what a view. Like, look back here. Mm -hmm. All right. I am going to turn the camera off. I've been filming and filming and filming and filming and these are the last few days that we've got so I'm gonna turn the camera off enjoy a hot dinner tonight and um, yeah unwind a bit we'll see you on the other side <laughs> Peaceful, beautiful evening sitting right here listening to a great horned owl perched right up there somewhere talking to us most of the night ended up doing a simple dinner broke out the mountain house which needs to get eaten because they're like almost 10 years old now so a little pasta primavera 
with a little bit of uh, beef sauces just to give it some, you know. Time to hit the road. Peaceful rain this morning is what we woke up to. That seems to have slowed down. And these trails are all very rocky, so I don't think we're going to get into any mud situations. So, let's continue our trek a little further north. Boy, I just love these peaceful, rainy mornings in the desert. They don't happen very often, but when you get them, the smells coming out of all of these different plants is just phenomenal. So Keith and I were just commenting on how impressive a job the BLM has done here in Nevada with all their signage. Over the top. Excellent job, guys. Absolutely phenomenal. There's really no question as to whether or not you're on a legal route. So that's a refreshing experience. I think that a lot of other organizations can take notes because these guys have knocked it out of the park. Wow, those are beautiful. Uh, stand the test of time. They you know? really do. It's like a back patio back here. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Cool. Today, we're on a mission to visit a once top secret location that up until recently was known only to the CIA. This was a destination that had been on Keith's radar for quite some time, and when he shared his idea with me, I agreed that this was an absolute must visit. So we began working our way along the BLM trail network to put us within a decent hiking distance of our objective. We're actually need a locker. Yeah, I would actually put it in uh, high. It seems to grip better when it's in high rather than low. <laughs> Several miles in, the trails quickly degraded and grew challenging from lack of use and upkeep. So we were again calling our traction aids into duty while adding a fresh layer of pinstripes to our growing collection. With the route getting even tighter, I did something I've only done three or four times in all my years of overland trailering. I disconnected and left the trailer in a dry wash to continue the drive deeper into the heart of the desert. Well, this trail's not a trail anymore. It's just not traveled. So we're gonna disconnect the trailer, continue on. Looks to like it gets progressively tighter, so yeah. Continue on to our point without just scratching it all to pieces. Years of flash floods have nearly erased this trail from the landscape, which is truly a testament to how quickly the earth can reclaim our puny attempts to subdue it. This is it, huh? Not a quarter mile up the wash, it was clear our drive had come to an end, and it was time to engage the uh, leather lockers and hoof it another mile or so up the valley. Thank you for that <laughs> In the shadows of the Cold War, a marvel of engineering took to the skies, embodying the pinnacle of stealth and speed. The A-12, 
a precursor to the more well-known SR-71 Blackbird. Unknown to the outside world, and designed to gather intelligence from the adversary using advanced cameras, speeds of over 2,200 miles per hour, and an almost indiscernible radar profile. Even if the A-12 was spotted, it would be gone long before the missiles showed up. On January 5, 1967, one of these A-12s, known as 928, took off from the infamous and top secret Area 51 with pilot Walter Ray, aka Dutch 45, strapped to the single seat cockpit with two Pratt & Whitney J-58 turbojet engines howling as the birds screamed over the desert. This routine sortie suddenly went wrong as the engines flamed out. 928 had run out of fuel due to a shortage during a scheduled refueling session. While he was aware of the situation, his attempts at fuel saving maneuvers as he made his way back to base had fallen short and he was faced with his only option, ejection. The advanced ejection system was designed to slow a pilot's descent from its 90,000 foot ceiling, then automatically clear them from the seat at 16,000 feet to deploy the primary parachute. But instead, Walter Ray remained stuck to the seat, presumably due to some questionable modifications, and tragically plummeted to his death here in the Nevada desert. Today, he is memorialized in the Book of Honor at CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, and here with this hand-built model of the A-12 and a collection of tributes in a nearby ammo can. It serves as a somber reminder of the sacrifices made by brave men and women who have served both publicly and in the dark shadows in secret service to our nation and its freedom.
Sometimes I feel like a criminal, feel like a castaway. This world keeps changing and I can't keep the pace. It's like a race. I didn't know I was running. But there are some things like rudders in the storm, someone to keep you warm, a friend to raise a glass, to take off your mask, to tell the truth and just be you. Oh yeah, all right. And feeling like you're nothing Trying not to give in Not to take it on the chin Trying to wear your thickest set of skin Music, it makes you feel good Makes you feel understood Like you're not alone Not a rolling stone Not the only one on the road Oh yeah, alright As the sun set, we began to make our climb up and over a pass to hunt for camp on the other side of the mountain, hopefully before dark. But this climb got steeper and steeper the further we went, and we began to get stretches of soft mud mixed with rock and gravel, which made Silver put in some extra work to keep everything moving forward. Just before we reached the pass, a white blanket of snow greeted us, and we were reminded that winter was still very much alive and well up here, in spite of our balmy desert experience from the past few days. Whew! Chilly! <laughs> that is, that is rough. Want to camp right here? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Climb in right now, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wow. Whew! That's a cold wind. I was challenged getting up and now going down in the snow might have to get Keith to tie a rope to the back of the trailer <laughs> be my land anchor what a view man look at this place Nevada love it Nevada love it. <laughs> Woo. after a quick look at the valley below a gusty ice cold wind sent us on our way and we carefully began to descend the opposite side of the mountain hoping to find lower elevations and warmer temperatures one last time. But we ran into one thing we hadn't expected today. Nasty, slick mud. Apparently, this area has seen a bit of a thaw today, so the top layer of the road had turned to grease, which made progress difficult, even on the flat ground. How about it? Trailer, follow me over here. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't deep, but we quickly ditched the idea of making it to the valley for camp and began looking for the first accessible spot to get off the trail before we inadvertently ditched the whole convoy. We are on flat ground and getting sideways. This is, uh, this is getting rough. It's only about half to three quarters of an inch of mud is wicked. I know there's rocks there. Give me some rocks. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> Thank you. 
Unfortunately, campsites were sparse along this section, and we were forced to take turns carrying speeds up the slippery hills and then easing back down until we could find a place to stop for the night. Finally, we spotted an area that would get us off the trail, and we were joined by three wild mustangs that seemed to like this spot as much as we did. If you kind of go up where I was, there's a big spot right there for you. All right, so tonight was Thursday night, so I just got done doing the live premiere chat over here on the laptop. Keith found a camp. It's it's a stopgap measure. The roads were just getting so bad. We're going to camp here, let the roads freeze up, and then get up early and, and get out of here because you know, we're just getting too sideways. And, um, yeah, it's not going to end well, especially as we get closer to some inclines that we have coming up. So, quick and easy snacks for dinner and set an alarm and get up and get out of here first thing in the morning. But um, speaking of mud, yeah, that's the situation we got going here. I had to use the door to scrape the top off of that. So, fun times. This is my first time hanging out in here. It's pretty cool, huh? I like it. <laughs> it's warm. It's, it's nice and toasty. Yeah. That's right. Very cool. Not bad. It's all good. It's a, a work in progress. It probably will be for a while. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's half the fun. That's absolutely. Yeah. The station was over on the north side of that mountain. I figured we were just going up and over and coming back here. Not the prettiest, but it'll taste good. Hey, for a night like tonight, that's perfect. <laughs> All right. Let's see how Keith's skills are on the mm -hmm. chicken quesadilla. It's no Sarah, I'm sure, but mm. you know. That's good, man. Good. How'd you sleep? Great, you yeah. know? Nice and toasty. It is a crisp, brisk morning, and the uh, the ground is now stiff, which was the goal. So uh, I don't think we'll have any problems getting out of here now. Let's roll. Mud on the roof of the camper. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what a difference a few hours and a huge drop in temperatures makes. We were barely able to move on some of these flat areas. And now, it's like pavement. 50 million times better. Man, <laughs> this, this is crazy. 
big, big help. Yeah, it's like, you know, no big deal right now, but this afternoon, oh, this will be a mess again. You know, we do our best to try and avoid the, the bad trails, the nasty trails, just so they don't get rutted up and, and abused. And Now granted, what we drove through was, I mean, it was literally only a half inch of mud, but it was so slick, so, so slick. So if you have time in your schedule and you can wait something like that out or come up with a different strategy to, you know, avoid putting yourself at risk and degrading the trails, do that. We were able to stop after about a mile and a half, two miles of trying to fight and just, you know, say, hey, let's just pull over and let her freeze up. Anyhow, let's get out of here. On behalf of myself and Keith, thank you so much for riding along with us on this adventure through Nevada. This trip left us hungry for more of this incredible state, and we will definitely be returning to explore more of its beautiful landscape. Until next time, remember to stay curious, and as always, leave it better than you found it. And if you've really enjoyed this video, we would love for you to join our family of supporters on Patreon. Just head to lso.link forward slash support for more details on how you can keep the Lifestyle Overland adventures rolling and get access to all kinds of behind the scenes bonuses. Patrons, you continue to amaze us with your support and encouragement. Thank you so much for all you do. We honestly would not be here without you. Yeah, awesome trip, man. Thank you so much. Good time. <laughs> All right, you have to take care of safe travel.